Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. Today's video is all about the paint on your car. So I'm working on my Corvette, but for whatever you're working on, and getting it to look the best that you can get it to look. Now, paint correction and compounding and polishing and buffing is a very popular topic on YouTube. And there's a lot of videos out there from guys who are professionals that detail cars every day on paint correction and the differences between this compound and that compound or, or one type of buffing pad versus another type of buffing pad. And those are great videos, some really detailed content. However, I can't help but feel like there's a lot of guys in a similar position to me. Uh, I'm not a professional detailer and I'm not going to be and to be honest, I don't want to be. Uh, I really don't enjoy this process that much. But I want my car to look as good as it can. Uh, and I realize that from time to time, I need to do some light paint correction or paint enhancement, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that's my goal with this video. Uh, it's not to be the end-all, be-all video about every detail of buffing and compounding. But I wanted to give you uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a high-level overview of a process that I'm going to use on my car. I'll let you see the end results. And if you're like me, I just want something, I have a go-to process uh, that gives me good results. I know what to expect, um, that I'm not going to mess up the paint, that I'm not going to make something worse and end up with a bunch of uh, swirl marks or something like that. And I don't have to keep, you know, 20 different grades of compound uh, sitting on my shelf because I'm just not going to use them uh, that often. So for this project, I've compounded and buffed the car once when I first got it. Uh, it was back before I made uh, YouTube videos for this channel, and it made a world of difference. Uh, this poor car, um, by the previous owner, left it outside in the parking lot for most of its life. It's only in recent years that it started living in a garage. And the paint was oxidized and kind of hazed over really bad, and it made a world of difference. Uh, when I compounded it, polished it, and waxed it, uh, really brought it to life. But that was several years ago. I've got the new engine back in it. I know spring's around the corner, so I want to get the car looking good again. So let's dive into the project. I'll share with you what I'm going to use, and I'll show you my process, a few tips that I've learned along the way, and hopefully you can benefit from it too. Okay, so let's talk for a moment about what products we're going to use. So we're starting from the position that you've already washed the car and that you've dried it. So our first step in the process uh, will be a clay bar kit. So I'm going to use the Meguiar's kit, but there's plenty of them out there. And they're all essentially the same. You've got a little bit of a quick detailer and then a bar of clay. And if you haven't detailed a car or clay barred a car before, I highly recommend it. It's very satisfying. Um, it's amazing the amount of gunk that comes off your paint. Uh, even a car that you just washed. Then we're going to move on to the compounding uh, step. Now if your car, your paint is in really good condition, you probably don't need to compound it. Uh, and it's not something you'd want to do every single time you detail the car. Because compounding, you're actually taking off a little bit of the um, clear coat of the car. Right? If you get a scratch, you got to wear down the clear coat enough that that scratch goes away. But if you do have some scratches or swirls that you need to compound out. So the first time I did my car, I used the Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. And you can get this pretty much in any auto parts store, Walmart, places like that. And it's really safe, does a really good job, uh, no issues there. I, I do highly recommend it. I had good success with it the first time. However, I didn't get all the scratches out, uh, or I've got some hard water marks in the the top coat that it, this didn't get out last time <clears throat> so i'm going to step it up and go to their m105 it's their ultra cut compound so i'm stepping it up a little bit uh this time and we'll see what kind of results uh, we get from this either one of these compounding i'm going to use an orange pad this is a, uh, a medium cutting pad <clears throat> you can get a more aggressive cutting pad but Orange is a, is a good middle ground to start with. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's pretty safe. You're not likely to mess up the paint with this. 
when we move on to the polishing step, again, I'm going to use the Meguiar's Ultimate Polish again. I had really good success with that last time. I'm going to use it again, and I'm going to polish with a white uh, pad. This is a polishing pad. And then for the wax, uh, again, the Meguiar's, I, I like their stuff. This is their Gold Class Carnuba, um, and I'm going to apply that with a black pad. Um, that's a finishing pad. It has no cutting to it whatsoever. Uh, so that's not going to change the finish. I'm just for applying and working in the wax. I'm using a Harbor Freight dual action uh, polisher. There are a number of high-end dual action polishers on the market. A number of them. You can spend a lot of money on a dual action polisher. And if you're doing cars all the time, whether... Uh, for personal use or professionally, then maybe it's worth investing. Uh, but for me, the Harbor Freight did a great job last time, and for the money spent, it got me where I needed to go. I did change out the backing plate on the um, Harbor Freight. I went to a 5-inch backing plate, and I'm using 5.5-inch uh, foam pads. You want the foam pad to be just a little bit larger than the backing plate. And if you can see, I'll move the camera over just a pinch. We can talk about it more in a minute. Uh, but I also put a mark on the backing plate. And I'll, I'll show you, but it helps you keep up with if the backing plate is spinning. If you put too much pressure on a dual action polisher, it stops spinning. And that helps prevent from burning the paint uh, if you get it on an edge or something like that. Which is a good feature, but you need to know when it's not working anymore. The other thing I'll show you... So I'll also mention, you'll go through these pads. I have two uh, of each of the pads. That allows me to keep working once a pad gets kind of saturated and um, filled up with old compound or polish, whatever it is. I can switch to a new pad and keep going uh, without having to stop and clean and wait for the pad to dry. <clears throat> Talking about cleaning a pad, this is a product from Wolfgang. I think I got this from Auto Geek. I'm sure there are other brands out there. They, I'm sure they all work the same. Uh, but this is a pad cleaner um, and then a scrub brush. So once you've got this thing loaded down with compound, when you go back to clean it, you can spritz some of this on there and then uh, work it with the, uh, the scrub brush. And that'll help get the old compound out of your pad and then you can rinse it out and let it dry. And then the final thing, and I'm not going to do it in this video, but I did it when I first bought the car. If you have scratches in the glass, I'll angle this down just a pinch. If you have scratches in your like your windshield glass or sad glass, you can also polish the glass. Now glass is very hard and it takes a lot of time. Uh, it's not like paint where you go over it four or five times and the scratch or swirl mark is gone. Glass is harder, so you have to keep going over it. So a glass buffing pad does not have any backing to it, right? This is, you know, an inch thick or whatever. This is no cushion. You can put a lot more pressure on this. And then this is a product called Seri Glass, uh, but it's for glass polishing and cleaning. And I had decent success with it. I had some windshield wiper scratches. Uh, that this helped take out when I first got the car. But this makes a huge mess. You really got to plan ahead. Uh, do this first and, you know, tape up and put uh, plastic down everything around the, the windshield or whatever piece of glass you're, you're cleaning because this slings all over the place. You got to keep this wet uh, so you don't put too much heat into the, into the glass and crack it. But, you know, each time you get this wet, it keeps wanting to, to sling uh, material out. But anyway, that's just an FYI. Should you need to do this at some point, this is what you could use. Okay, I'm also going to do a quick walk around of the vehicle just to show you a few areas um, that I hope to make some improvement in. You see some of the hard water spots. And then back here, of course, where I took off the emblem. Hopefully I can make this a little better. And again, you can see some of the hard water spots. This car sat outside at various points in its life.
So hopefully we can make some of this better. Okay, so clay barring a car uh, is really easy. So you got a little quick detailer, and you got your bar of clay. And what this is doing is removing any debris that's embedded in the surface of the paint. So the car should be clean. You should have just washed it. It should be completely dry. And of course, even if you're sitting in a garage, uh, you may want to dust it off uh, before you get started. Uh, it just reduces the amount of contaminants that end up in your, your clay bar. So just wet down the surface that you're going to work on. Really, you're just rubbing the bar of clay across the paint. See that? <clears throat> so my paint, not it's not too bad. Like I said, I've done this before on this car. But you can see, as the, the clay starts to darken, that's where it's picking up contaminants that are embedded in the paint. So then we'll just wipe this down with a uh, microfiber towel, and we'll keep moving. And really, you should just focus, you should do all the car, but it's going to be the horizontal flat surfaces, where anything that's falling would settle. Uh, you'll notice you probably won't end up with a lot of uh, debris on the sides of the car. But the hood, the deck lid, stuff like that, that's where you're going to get the most off uh, and most benefit from the clay bar. Oh, and I forgot to mention the best part. So after you wipe down the area that you just clay barred, so take an area where you, you haven't gone over yet, feel it, it's clean but just a little rough, and then come over an area where you just clay barred. And it's unbelievable. If you've done it well, it's almost slick as glass, right? Kind of clean but rough, and then slick as glass. It's crazy the difference that uh, a clay bar makes on the paint. And you can do a clay bar all the time, right? That's not just like, well, I'm compounding and going to buff the car. Clay bar, you could do uh, whenever. So really makes a big difference. Okay, so we're finished. Uh, clay bar in the car, got that part nice and clean. Uh, so now we're ready to move on to our compounding. Uh, step one with the new pad, <clears throat> and I've used these pads before, but we still want to prep the pad for the first time uh, that we apply the compound. Uh, so really it's just a matter of working compound into the pad so it's not going on bone dry. So I just kind of work it in with my hands. Wear some gloves because it's a little messy. Just want kind of an even distribution. This way when you apply your compound and you're ready to buff, all your compound doesn't get soaked up by the pad. So, to get us started, I'm going to apply some kind of pea-sized dots. Okay, so we're over at the car. Um, you want to work in small sections, say two by two. If you go too large, uh, the compound starts drying out before you really get a chance to work the abrasives. Uh, you want to spread it a little bit to get you started. And then always start and stop your polisher, uh, well, your, yeah, your dual action polisher with it sitting on the car. Otherwise, if you lift up on it, it's going to sling polish uh, all over the place. I'm going to start maybe speed two, two and a half, uh, just to kind of spread out. Uh, the compound and then we'll turn it up when we actually start polishing. Okay. I'm going to turn this up to speed 5. We'll see how we like that. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. Let the machine do the work. Let the uh, compound work. Work in a cross hatch pattern. Come back across and we'll make uh, four or five passes. You'll be able to tell once the uh, compound uh, starts drying out and breaking down. It's no longer doing any work. It'll start to go from, you know, this kind of creamy hazy 
uh, to just kind of a clearish uh, dry haze. Okay, so we'll wipe this down, see how it looks, and decide if we want to make a second pass with it, uh, or if we're happy with it, then we can move on to the rest of the car. Do a clean micro microfiber towel. It's better, but I think I'm going to make a, another pass to the same area and see if there's any more improvement to be had uh, from working this section again. So it's definitely a big improvement. Still got some hard water spots that I don't know if they're going to come out. Okay, so I've made my way around to the back of the car. I'm still uh, compounding. But I thought I would do the, um, this side has been compounded, this side hasn't uh, with the tape. And sometimes, especially this car wasn't that bad as far as oxidation and, and that sort of thing. So visually, it's kind of hard sometimes to see uh, the results of your work um, but doing something like this can kind of give you an idea of what sort of change uh, you're getting from the compounding so there we go I think you kind of get a decent look at that and get it where it's not such a bad reflection So you can pretty clearly see the line. This ad's been compounded. This ad hasn't. Um, and I haven't even uh, polished yet, which will actually bring some additional uh, luster and sheen uh, to this side, um, you know, when we're done. But seeing something like this kind of uh, reaffirms that your hard work uh, is worthwhile because uh, this is a lot of work. Um, but I think it's going to be worth it. So just want to kind of give you a, a visual and I will keep going okay so I finished the compounding phase of buffing the car uh, this project has drug on um, for the better part of a month I got really busy at work and I just had no time uh, to work on the car <clears throat> the silver lining to that was that it gave me an opportunity to try uh, a couple of additional products I wasn't getting quite the cut that I wanted from the orange pad uh, and getting out some of the uh, etching, water, hard water etching or something like that in the paint. So I thought I would try just a couple of other things uh, since I had the time to wait on Amazon to, to bring me some other products. I bought, uh, this is a, another Lake Country pad. Uh, it's their CCS pad. It's got like the little dimples in it and it's supposed to help hold the, um, the product as you're working it and give you a little bit longer working time. Um, I only used this once. Actually, I only pretty much buffed the hood of the car with it. And if I don't know if you can really see in the video, the center of it collapsed. Uh, right? Uh, pretty disappointed with that. Um, I only used it essentially one time, and the the center of the pad collapsed. And it it may have had a, a little better uh, cut to it than this just a regular foam pad, but it didn't blow me away and then I was kind of disappointed with this I, I like Lake Country pads in general uh, but this one for whatever reason I don't know if it's defective or, or whatever but so I decided to go back and try one more thing and this is a um, microfiber cutting disc from Meguiar's uh, they were one of the first to do the the microfiber uh, cutting pads obviously there's a big difference between uh, these two you can see in the thickness um, of the pad. This is going to give you your most aggressive uh, cutting power. And I actually really like this. Uh, I even went back, even some of the areas that I had previously done with either this pad or, or that one, <clears throat> um, I went back over with this. 
some spots where I had some hard water etching or there were some surface scratches that were a little bit deeper that these hadn't gotten out. Uh, I went back and worked on uh, with this. And I, I really like this pad. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind, though. If certain areas of the Corvette, like the hood, for example, um, had a lot, have a lot of waves in it. It's just part of the natural curves uh, and shape of the car. Obviously, you don't have a lot of cushion in this. This pad conforms very nicely uh, as you go over uh, curves in the, the car. So as you get to a, an edge or something like that, uh, it conforms very nicely. You do have to be careful, more careful with this pad um, as you go over some of those areas. It doesn't like to transition over um, those curves or, or shapes in the, the hood. Um, not a complaint really, just something to, to bear in mind. Um, so honestly, my future go forward setup, I still really like just this basic uh, foam cutting pad, uh, though this is a, a two pack, so I've got two of these. Um, this would definitely be part of my arsenal of, of cutting pads. I, I was pretty happy with this. Um, just a, a note, if you're buying this, if I can get, so you can see it, uh, they call it their uh, five inch disc, but it's actually five and a half inches, uh, like all these other pads. Uh, it's meant to be used with a five inch uh, backing plate on your uh, dual action polisher. So don't get thrown off that it calls it a five inch, uh, thinking that it's gonna be right to the edge of your backing plate, because obviously you'd be concerned of bumping an edge or something in the backing plate, damaging your paint. Uh, you still get just that little bit of overhang from the backing plate. So if you do bump a, a corner or something like that, uh, it doesn't damage anything. The other product I tried uh, is from Chemical Gas. It's their uh, pad conditioner. I use this quite a bit and I really like it. Um, I should have had this last time. So I, I would highly, <coughs> excuse me, recommend this. The way I used it, so if I had a dry pad that I was just getting started with, um, I'd give it a spritz, kind of work it in. It just opens up some of the, um, the pores and the foam. And then after I put the, um, you know, my compound on there, maybe I'd give it another spritz. And it really extends the working time uh, of both the pad and your compound and it doesn't take a lot um, obviously I've, I've buffed quite a bit and I've only used you know just a, a little bit from the bottle and it smells nice um, so I definitely recommend uh, that as well I'm happy that I spent money on that and I mentioned this previously but this is the um, the pad cleaning brush um, I highly recommend these every time I buff, buff a section of the car you know, obviously it works in the compound into the, the pad. And over time that starts to, to dry out um, or get matted in. So literally every time I finish buffing a section, I come over and I go over the pad. And it helps get any of the dry stuff out of the pad. Um, and it really makes it so that you can use your pads for a long time. So between this and this, uh, you get some really good work time um, out of your pads. So this is where we're at at the moment. Uh, we've compounded the whole car. Um, and I'll be honest, I really like how the uh, the Meguiar's uh, Ultra Cut Compound finish is out. You know, sometimes you get like a haze after you've compounded the car, which is why you typically have to follow it uh, with a polishing step. The Meguiar stuff seems to finish out really well. There's only a slight haze to certain areas. Um, I probably wouldn't, I'm not recommending that you stop and skip the polish step um, but I'm just saying I, I like how the McGuire stuff uh, finishes out there's not like a significant haze that you're gonna have to work out with the polish um, so I'm going to move on to the next step which is polishing okay I'm ready to move on to the polishing uh, step so I've got the white polishing pad uh, get a little spritz And then, I've, as I showed you earlier, I'm going to use the Meguiar's uh, Ultimate Polish. I've used this before in the car, and I was pretty happy with the uh, results. Um, this first time, I'm going to run this on low, 
we'll kind of spread it out and then I help uh, uh, condition the pad. Same process you would have used uh, when you were uh, compounding. Uh, roughly a two by two area. We'll start on a lower setting. This is kind of like half speed. And kind of uh, spread the uh, the polish out, and then uh, we'll start working it in a crosshatch uh, pattern. Okay, that's the process. Uh, take a moment. <clears throat> if it's the first section you've worked on, uh, get the light on it just right. Kind of inspect your work. Make sure you're happy with the results that are that you're getting. Uh, if you need to adjust something else, the time to do it uh, before you go through the entire car. But I think we're headed the right direction. So I'm going to repeat this about a hundred times on the rest of the car, and. Um, We'll keep moving. Okay, so we're down to our final step in the process. Uh, by this point, right, you washed the car, you clay barred it, you did a uh, the compound, and you polished. Uh, if you need to apply any spots for uh, touch-up paint, that would be the time to do it after you finish polishing. Um, I had a few spots in the front bumper. I did some uh, touch-up paint, <clears throat> um, and typically you should wait uh, a couple of days. For the touch-up paint to finish curing uh, before you go over it with the wax um, it'll help it adhere a little better uh, it's kind of tough to do if you're trying to get everything done uh, in a single weekend but for me it worked out uh, i've got to work during the week and i just don't have time to mess with the car so just doing it on the weekend so it had plenty of time uh, to cure so anyway we're ready to apply um, our wax right we want to protect the finish that we've worked so hard to uh, to create so I'm going to use the Meguiar's uh, Carnuba Liquid Wax. Uh, there are several uh, good waxes on the market. Use whatever uh, makes you happy. Uh, you apply the wax with one of the black uh, pads. There's no, these are really soft pads. There's no cut to these, right? You're just spreading the wax. So that's kind of the difference in this step. Uh, we're no longer working the paint like we were with the compound or the polish. Uh, you know, trying to change the... The surface of the paint with this we're just spreading the wax we want a nice even coat of wax across the surface um, of the paint whatever we're, we're working on <clears throat> so you don't have to use a, uh, a ton of wax the nice thing about this you can actually work uh, larger sections than say if you were compounding or, or polishing right you kind of Typically, want just a little two by two section. With wax, you can do maybe an entire hood, a whole side of the car, because um, you gotta let the wax dry uh, anyway before you wipe it off. So I'll just kind of show you the the real basic. I don't have the speed very high on the the machine, but uh, I'll show you over on the car. Okay, so I'm going to apply the wax. Um, I've got it on kind of a, a medium setting on the wax uh, on the dual action polisher. Like I said, we're just spreading the, the wax so it's not like you don't have to apply pressure and work it into the paint. Uh, it's not going to do anything. There's no cut to this pad. So we're just spreading the wax around. Okay. And if you run low on wax, you can always stop and, and reapply a little bit uh, to cover whatever section you're working on. Uh, then give this just a, a few minutes to dry. It will dry to just a, a light haze. And then you'll be able to wipe it off, obviously, with a, uh, a microfiber towel. If you go to wipe it off and it still kind of it smears, uh, it's not dry yet. So give it another uh, minute or two. It should come off real easy. And it should leave just a nice, clean finish. Um, like I said, if it smears when you wipe over it, uh, give it another second or two to dry. Uh, so that's what we'll let happen. Okay, so we're ready to wipe it off. Okay, there we go. So the applying the wax step is really easy and it goes much faster than the compounding or, or the polishing. Uh, you can do large sections 
And then while that dries, you can move on to the next section. And then while that dries, you can come back and wipe off uh, the excess, excess wax on the first section. So uh, this part will go pretty quick.